Hey guys, it's Briar, and welcome back to the Briar Chats Shh podcast. The podcast where we sit down and just chat a little bit of shh. Today's podcast is a bit of a spicy, scandalous, like crazy, crazy bananas topic. I really wanted to talk about it with you guys and I felt like the podcast would be a good way to do that because it's a way where we can just sit down and chat about things and it's very much casual opinion based. It's not serious, like it's not me stating anything as fact. It's just us sitting down chatting a little bit ish and just kind of having a platform where we can do that. Today's podcast, I wanted to chat to you guys about everything that has happened with Ticketmaster and Taylor Swift. This is a very spicy, crazy, crazy cats topic and I really wanted to talk to you guys about it and I felt like that the podcast would be kind of a good way to do that because it's very much opinion based. I'm not stating anything as fact at all. I'm not claiming to be even a expert or well versed in the topic, but I just kind of wanted to talk to you guys about the whole situation in general. I'm not stating this as fact. I'm not presenting to this to you guys as a serious, reliable or well-versed place to find out about the situation or to get, you know, the facts, the figures and all of that stuff. But I have looked into the topic and I really just wanted to chat to you guys about Ticketmaster, Taylor Swift, the whole Eras Tour fiasco. So... If that is something that you are interested in chatting about, stick around and let's get into it. So like I said in the beginning, I am definitely not well versed in Ticketmaster, ticket selling, like anything of that nature. I did read some Wikipedia articles and I obviously have got the tweets and the responses and all of that so that we can kind of have a reference point throughout the video but I'm not stating anything as fact so with that out of the way let's just get into chatting about this. So I mean as you guys probably heard in my last podcast bestie is a swifty or a at least. I very much have been enjoying the Midnight's album and I very much enjoy Taylor as a artist and I've been to two of her shows, Reputation and Speak Now, so you know I feel like I have enjoyed her both in a music way and as a you know concert goer. And when she announced she was doing the Eras tour, I was definitely pumped, fizzing, ready to go, ready to rumble, very excited and very much hoping that she would announce some New Zealand dates so that I would be able to see this tour because I've really enjoyed the album and I would love to see it. And I personally thought that the Reputation tour was so underrated, like it was so amazing, crazy good. At the time, you know, she was in her Reputation era. So she was not as popular as she is today. She was still going through her redemption arc. So in that respect, like it was very easy to get tickets. Like I didn't even get tickets when they were released. I got them like close to the date because I was like, oh, I really want to go. And I was able to find someone to go with me. So it was very much like a last minute kind of vibe situation. And it was like, there were still really good tickets available and they were pretty affordable. I'm pretty sure that the tickets that we got were under like $100 New Zealand and we were kind of on the side and could see everything super clearly we weren't super far back like we, we could see we could sing we could dance we could vibe like it was very much a good time and that was the only performance that she even did in New Zealand granted it was at like I think that the, where she performed is like almost a 40,000 capacity venue so it is a very big big stadium obviously but she only did the one I was very much like I really enjoyed reputation and I very much would like I very much please and thank you would like to be able to go to her errors tour and I feel like some people maybe saw the writing on the wall when she said that it was with Ticketmaster but I feel like here in New Zealand like we don't really have that many options and it's kind of as it's come out is kind of like that all, all across the world where Ticketmaster really holds a you know big space in the ticketing and concert kind of genre no space I don't know Ticketmaster is a huge player in this space and to me like it makes sense that she would collaborate or work with Ticketmaster because they're global they're a big company and they would kind of have the most experience I would say with working with big tours like hers as we could see she has only announced oh 
I should also say, I am recording this on the 20th of November, so anything that comes out after that, like, Bestie didn't know. I maybe know now, but I don't know now. But yeah, she had already announced like 50 tour dates for just America alone. So this is a big production, big show, big time drama at Scaledale. We love to see it. So like this is a massive, massive, massive show and a massive scale. And so like to me, I was like, yeah, sure. It checks out that she would do it with Ticketmaster. Like some people didn't already didn't like Ticketmaster. I wasn't in the know at that time. Like I had no idea, but overall I feel like it does make sense for someone like Taylor Swift to work with Ticketmaster when she's doing undoubtedly a record breaking show. So I feel like now would be a good time to just chat about Ticketmaster before we talk about everything that happened with the eras pre-sale so and like especially for me as someone who didn't really know much about Ticketmaster or that they had even merged with Live Nations I felt like I wanted to have a look into everything that was happening and the background and all of that stuff so I thought that we could go through that now chat about the fact that Ticketmaster and Live Nation have merged to be one company and what that kind of means overall so if I'm looking away it's because I'm reading because Bestie as I said before I did I did read some Wikipedia pages, I did take some notes, like Bestie kind of came prepared on a very amateur scale. And so I guess yeah, my source is Wikipedia, so take that for what you will. In February 2009, so quite a long time ago, so basically the whole time I've been going to concerts, Ticketmaster and Live Nation actually merged to become one big jumbo one big gal pal kind of company they were like when two become one i don't know the rest of the lore this actually had to be approved by the u.s justice system and i believe it is because like i mean we all know the game monopoly but the idea behind a monopoly is that it's like one company that is the only company that offers that service in that genre so like for live nation and Ticketmaster merging they could have started to become a monopoly of the ticketing space so that i think is why that they had to be approved by the u.s justice system justice department but they were approved to do this in february 2009 but there were some conditions. One of the conditions was that they had to give their ticketing software to a competitor as well as license this software to AEG, who is another competing company in the ticketing space. So it was basically the US Department of Justice, whatever, trying to stop them from fully being able to monopolize their software and everything that they kind of had that no one else did. So they're gonna have to they had to share the answers a little bit with some other companies. The other thing is that they were under a 10 year provision that said basically, Bestie, if a venue or someone else works with another company, you can't hold it against them. You can't be like, get all up and antsy about it and basically punish them for it. And like, to me, I'm like, I didn't even realize that this had to be made a rule. One would think that you just wouldn't be allowed to do that anyway, but apparently not. So yes, that was a 10 year provision from 2010 to 2020, everyone's favorite year, is that they were basically being super duper watched to make sure that they do not do this. And so what I saw that happened after Live Nation and Ticketmaster to became one kind of vibes is that they started acquiring a lot of other companies, a lot of other ticketing companies. And this is not just in America, this is global. Like they had a global big girl vision to take over the space basically, or at least to the extent that they could. So they acquired a lot of companies all around the world that were also in the ticketing space. The interesting thing about Ticketmaster is that it's not like when they moved merge with Live Nation is when the complaints started. It really seems like there has been complaints against Ticketmaster for different things like anti-competition claims or handling fees or all sorts of different things. These complaints are not new. These have literally, as per Wikipedia, have literally been happening since 1994. So since before Bestie was on this earth, people have been complaining about Ticketmaster. And it's not just like everyday Joe Schmo. It's like literally Pearl Jam and and people that have worked with Destiny's Child and Beyonce, like 
big time music industry people have been complaining about Ticketmaster, their fees and how the fees are not fair or how that all the hidden fees that they have added on are anti-competition, all that kind of stuff. People have complained about them for a very long time. So this is not a new issue that has just been recently stumbled across or has come up just because they merged with Live Nation. I feel like it's something that's been going on for a very long time. As I said, in 1994, Pill Jam did file a complaint about fees and this is one of the main things that seems to be complained about with Ticketmaster over the years is the fees that they add on to their tickets. Uh, there have been examples where the fees are more than the ticket price themselves and they go up closer to the event and they're the only ones that sell the tickets. So it's like you basically have to pay two tickets for one ticket because they're the only ones you can buy it from and they can add on whatever fees they like. But this is something that has has been complained about over and over the years by many different people saying you know this is not a-okay besties like don't do this it's not appropriate kind of vibe and this is where it really comes back to them monopolizing without monopolizing the space is that when someone collabs or like Taylor is doing you know is using Ticketmaster as the company to sell their tickets they're the only ones that have the tickets it's not Ticketmaster and AEG it's not Ticketmaster and Bestie down the road it's just Ticketmaster so they are able to add on any sort of fees that they like and no one can do diddly or squat about it basically they just have to suck it up if you want to go to the event you got to pay the fees and it's really at Ticketmaster's discretion like what the fees are and in that way it very much is coming across monopolizationification of the situation. And remember how I said that they were under watch by the US justice system for 10 years for not being like, hey bestie, you can't work with other people. Well, apparently they broke that provision and got fined $3 million for violating these terms. But then they were also had this provision renewed for five more years. So from 2020 to 2025. And I think they would get fined a million dollars if they broke it again. Don't quote me on that, but I feel like it's a million dollars, but it's at least in the millions of dollars is kind of a fine but it's kind of like these are mixed messages from the US Justice Department I feel like because it's like how can you find someone but then also say but off you go you know like and especially when you think about Ticketmaster and the scale that that a company like them is at a million three million dollars is a scrape on the knee it's like a it's nothing that's going to tear them down or teach them a lesson. And especially if you just let them skiddly D on their merry way, like they just be doing what they do and they're going to get away with what they can. Allegedly, in my opinion, is it really an opinion? It's just something silly goofy to say. But yeah, that's all of the kind of background information I felt like was a little bit relevant going into talking about the Eras tour situation because I feel like that is context that I certainly did not have when I heard about all the pre-sale fiascos disasters and I feel like probably a lot of other people didn't either. So Back to present day, back to today where, or a couple days ago, where Taylor's pre-sale starts with Ticketmaster. Basically, I feel like pre-sales are a pretty common practice these days. And I would assume they happen because it's like a reward for the fans, but also a way to make it so that not everyone is trying to buy tickets at once. And it's a limited amount. So you would assume that not everyone gets this opportunity, but it means that kind of fun funnels people through in a more organized fashion as opposed to chaos all for once spongebob everyone deleted his name running around screaming crying screaming crying perfect storm that's what one would assume would happen with the pre-sale but nay 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 i say with this pre-sale it was an absolute fire disaster catastrophe i think i've mentioned it on this podcast but i watched Kiki Chanel or Kylie on Twitch and she was actually Twitch streaming whilst she was in the queue. So I really got to watch someone in the queue as well as people chat about it in the discord and how much of a 
show it was trying to get these tickets basically so many people got put in this line where it just said there's 2,000 plus people in front of you and it's like okay I'll wait my turn but it was a literal disaster in every possible way people were waiting all day like eight plus hours in these lines people were having error upon error like card errors not logged in errors code errors an error you can think of someone had that error and weren't able to purchase the tickets equally then when people got through after waiting in that line there were no tickets left or it was the most and only the most expensive tickets left or if you were able to grab a ticket or two for you and a bestie you would try and buy it and it'd be gone someone else would have bought it so it was really a sh show from start to finish in every single possible way and when you think that these pre-sale codes, they should have known how many pre-sale codes they were giving out to the quantity of tickets that they were also selling. You know, like the math definitely was not mathing that day to make it so that the pre-sale meant that there was enough tickets and not too many people had a code and people would file through seamlessly single line all that kind of good fun stuff so basically it was a disaster doll PR disaster absolute catastrophe and everyone was pretty pissed at Taylor Nation as well because we heard nothing like there was literally not a peep from Taylor Nation or Ticketmaster for the longest time about the situation eventually they had to cancel the Capital One pre-sales and there were delays of other pre-sales with Ticketmaster but there was not really any sort of true addressing of the situation now I have both statements that did eventually come out so I thought we could go through them together. So the first to respond was Ticketmaster. And if I'm looking to the side, it's because I'm reading. Who said, we want to apologize to Taylor and all of her fans, especially those who had a terrible experience trying to purchase tickets. We feel we owe it to everyone to share some information to help explain what happened and then they have a link to the Ticketmaster website. Taylor Swift, the Eras Tour on sale explained, we strive to make ticket buying as easy as possible for fans but that hasn't been the case for many people trying to buy tickets for Taylor Swift, the Eras Tour. First we want to apologize to Taylor and all her fans what we said they said before we knew a record number of fans wanted tickets to taylor's tour by requiring registration verified fans is designed to help manage high demand shows as we speculated identifying real humans and weeding out bots keeping bots out of queues and avoiding overcrowding helps them make make the wait time shorter and on sale smoother Based on fan interest at registration, we knew this would be big. Over 3.5 million people pre-registered for Taylor Swift Tix pre-sale, powered by verified fans, which is the largest registration in history. Historically, around 40% of, of invited fans actually show up and buy tickets and purchase an average of three tickets. Around 1.5 million people were sent codes to join on sale for all 52 show dates, including the 47 sold by Ticketmaster. The remaining 2 million verified fans were placed on a waiting list on the small chance that tickets might still be available after those who received a code had never shopped. Then the next part, the demand for tickets for Taylor's tour broke records and part of our website. Historically, we've been able to manage huge volumes coming into the site to shop for tickets. So those with verified fan codes have a smooth shopping process. However, this time, the staggering numbers of bot attacks as well as fans who didn't have codes drove unprecedented tra traffic to our site, resulting in 3.5 billion total system requests, four times our previous peak. We handled on sales for countless top tours, some of the biggest sporting events and more. Never before has verified fan on sale sparked so much attention or traffic. This disrupted the predictability and reliability that is a hallmark of our verified fans platform. Here is a look blah 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 they have a little a little cutesy graph that you can see on their website if you like and then it usually takes us about an hour to sell through a stadium show but we slowed down some sales and pushed back others to stabilize the system the trade-off was longer wait times and queues for some fans overall we estimate about 15 
percent of interactions across the site experience issues and that 15 percent is too many including passcode validation error that caused fans to lose tickets that they had carded. And the last part, despite the disruption, a new sale record was set. Over 2 million tickets were sold on Ticketmaster for Taylor Swift The Eras Tour on November 15th, the most tickets ever sold for an artist in a single day. All 2 million tickets for the verified fan on sale were sold to verified fans. Only ticket buyers who were verified were permitted to enter a queue. Verification is tied to a user's account and validated at login, which is why users had to log in to enter the queue. For additional security, ticket buyers also entered their unique code to complete their purchase. No one who wasn't verified was allowed to enter the queue, but huge traffic hitting the site overall meant we had to slow down queues to keep them stable. 2.4 million tickets have been sold for the tour overall across on sale for verified fans and Capital One card holders on both Ticketmaster and SeatGeek. Less than 5% of the tickets for the tour have been sold or posted for res resale on secondary market. On sales that don't use verified fans typically see 20% to 30% of inventory ending up on secondary markets. So yes, it's a lot of words, it's a lot of things being said, but the overall message is that it was unprecedented. I feel like we're so sick of unprecedented, unprecedented times, unprecedented years, like we're over it. We just want precedented, we want precedented time. But that was basically how Ticketmaster responded. It was lengthy. It was They were bringing the stats. They were bringing the numbers. They brought the graphs to kind of explain to us why this happened. And it just kind of seems like too many codes were given out. And the pre-sale did not have the intended effect that it should have. It seems like if they knew that it was going to be such a big turnout you would think that they would err on the side of caution and send out less codes and put more people on the wait list as opposed to the other way around but I digress anyway people were kind of like a lot of people felt a bit gypped because everyone that they knew who tried to buy tickets had a horrible experience so a lot of people did not appreciate the 15 percent you know statement about the situation and a lot of people were like mm, I don't know a single person that just flawlessly went through that queue and didn't have any issues so it just doesn't the math don't seem to be mathing but it one thing is for sure it was record-breaking it was groundbreaking and the site got broken everything was in shambles and basically we had to wait a couple of days for Taylor to give her own statement about the situation which I will read now so then we can just discuss. Taylor posted this to her Instagram story. I saw it yesterday morning, Saturday morning so that would have been like around the 18th I think that she posted it so three-ish days after the pre-sale. Well it goes without saying that I'm extremely protective of my fans. We've been doing this for decades together and over the years I've brought so many elements of my career in-house. I've done this specifically to improve the quality of my fans experience by doing it myself with my team who cares as much about my fans as I do. It's really difficult for me to trust an outside entity with these relationships and loyalties and excruciating for me to just watch mistakes happen with no recourse. There are a multitude of reasons why people had such a hard time trying to get tickets and I'm trying to figure out how the situation can be improved mo moving forward. I'm not going to make excuses for anyone because we had asked them multiple times if they could handle this kind of demand and we were assured they could. It's truly amazing that 2.4 million people got tickets but it really pisses me off that a lot of them feel like they went through several bear attacks to get them. And to those who didn't get tickets all I can say is that my hope is to provide more opportunities for us to get all get together and sing these songs. Thank you for wanting to be there. You have no idea how much that means. So these are the statements that we have got about the situation. And I mean, I don't know anything. As I've said, I'm just a girly pop. But to me, I'm like, Taylor's obviously entered into a, an agreement with Ticketmaster. So as much as you would want to be like, effort, I'm 
going to do this myself like I'm going to start over all that stuff like I'm sure it's not that simple equally speaking out about them you have an ongoing relationship with them and wanting them to provide a better experience for your fans so that you can go on tour and sell your tickets so I feel like it's a very difficult situation to be in and I'm sure there is a lot of red tape, like legal stuff that has to be considered when making a statement like this. To me, it's very clear that Taylor is very pissed off about the whole situation. And I mean, rightfully so. It makes you look like a bit of an idiot, to be honest. And you know, like, it just really put her relationship with her fans in complete and utter jeopardy. And I'm not saying that lightly because so many people are like, I don't even want to listen to the album anymore. I can't listen to the album anymore. I don't want to go because that was such an awful experience. Like it is not just that it was annoying to wait in line. It's actually put people off listening to her music and wanting to go to her concerts at all. So it's really not just like a silly, goofy thing where it's like it was annoying. Like I think that there are really big real repercussions of the situation and unfortunately for Taylor even though it's Ticketmaster who messed up it's Taylor who is going to have the negative effects from it and I'm sure that's why she's incredibly pissed about it. I mean if it was me I would personally want to just take it all back refund everyone's money and like do it again better but in reality I just really don't think that that is possible so I don't know if she's trying to figure out if she can add more dates to the places that were extremely high demand or what she's trying to do I'm sure that this will delay international dates it will delay any further sales because this is a big time problem and also just the logistics of it like girly pop is gonna be on tour for a very long time to try and meet the demand of her tour and i'm just not really sure how she'll even be able to meet those needs to be honest i think that is the unfortunate part of the situation is that it was Ticketmaster who messed up, Ticketmaster who was responsible for the codes and all of that stuff, but it's Taylor who's gonna be the one that suffers. She already is suffering, people are, you know, people are popping off on TikTok and I'm sure Twitter, but you know, people are not happy, people are not at all satisfied with the situation, people want more to be done and it's basically Taylor that's the one that's being called out and asked to address it, fix it and make it better and when you're dealing with massive companies like Ticketmaster, like I'm sure they won't just let you leave the contract and you know start again even though I'm sure that's probably what she would want to do. It's what I would want to do. I mean, I would probably want to cry and then I would want to start again. But yeah, I mean, overall, it's just a really sucky situation. I just, yeah, it's so sad to see so many people disappointed. And I think the thing that really sucks as well is like, like I said in the beginning, her tickets have always been pretty affordable and you've always gotten a pretty good seat wherever you are. So the fact that it's not been that way this time is really terrible. Also, the other really messed up thing is that because of the demand and because of the fact that these basically all the shows have been sold out in this first pre-sale so it's not even just that the pre-sale was a mess it's that there's no tickets left so a lot of people are reselling them for a ridiculous markup like tens of thousands of dollars to go to a Taylor Swift concert and it's like yeah sure I'm sure it'd be incredible and I'm sure besties who have lots of money like sure no skin off their back you know finna be in the pit but for most people there's just no way that they could justify spending tens of thousands of dollars to go and i think that's the thing that sucks for everyone is that they realize oh i don't even have a chance in the general sale because 2.4 million tickets is pretty much every ticket for the entire show there's probably a couple hundred thousand tickets less for the you know 450 shows so it's a negligible amount there's a very small amount of tickets left from that pre-sale it was a disaster it's still a PR disaster I really don't know what Bestie's gonna do and since I'm just a girly pop I don't have answers but yeah it'll be really interesting to see what she does and it'll be really interesting to see if they can fix it what they do if they add more 
you know, shows. Like, I really don't know. I really, <laughs> I'm just sitting here like, I really don't know what they can do. Like, can they, I don't know if they can scale up the stadiums that they picked and just go for the really big ones. Like, I'm just a girly pop from New Zealand. I don't know Taylor Bestie, but like, I hope that they can figure it out because it is Taylor that's the one that's suffering, not Ticketmaster. And I think that information that we talked about earlier just kind of lets us see that they get called out all the time, but they don't really have any real ramifications for these situations. Time and time again, they get called out, but at the end of the day, it usually doesn't go anywhere and they just get to skiddly D on their way, being Ticketmaster and Live Nation and just doing what they do. But yeah, that is kind of all that I wanted to chat about with the whole Taylor Ticketmaster situation. Once again, I'm recording this November 20th, so if anything else happens after this, I didn't know at this moment in time when I'm recording. But yeah, thank you guys so much for sitting and chatting with me today, and I'll chat to you in the next one. Bye!